What up guys? Today we're talking about why developers hate WordPress most of the time. So when I finished Code Bootcamp, I know I always talk about Code Bootcamp, but when I finished Code Bootcamp, a lot of developers there had to take what they could find. Beggars can't be choosers. You just spend 10K on Bootcamp, you need a job, you gotta start paying that off. Those loans are coming due anyways. And so the developers there just had to take what they could and they would get WordPress jobs. And so there are WordPress developers and there are WordPress developers. And so what that means is, since WordPress is built in PHP, you're making themes, you're making plugins, but there's WordPress developers, which is just when you load up a WordPress, click next, install, next, yes, good to go, yes, I agree to your terms and conditions, sell my soul, little asterisk, and that, you know, that to me, and to a lot of people, isn't really development. Um, it's just more of a Squarespace type site. So it's a CMS. For those of you who don't know, a CMS is a content management system. So originally WordPress started out to be a platform for blogging and then so every single theme has some place for people to put comments. So it's like PCGamer.com. You scroll down the bottom, it's got comments and then there's an article up at the top. I'm pretty sure they're probably using some sort of WordPress, if not some kind of custom CMS content management system. But, so the developers had to take what they could and um, when you go, when you, when you take a WordPress job and then you see that on your resume and then you go to another job, they're gonna ask, are you the developer? Or did you create the PHP in this WordPress or were you the developer? Which is just click next, install, use the dashboard, scroll down to the plugins, download the plugin that you want, download the plugin that does whatever you need it to do. You got real estate, property listings, you got pretty much anything you want. I think even Shopify has something on there. So WordPress is more of a drag and drop type system. There's no real code required unless you're doing custom CSS. There's a little thing at the top you can click custom CSS and you can pick an element out and you can style it. But other than that, it doesn't really have any code behind it. Um, there's a rich text editor on some of the pages. Hey buddy, you okay? You all right, buddy? My dog hurt his foot. Be all right if you just sit down, okay? Go lay down. I don't want you walking on your foot, okay buddy? So basically, WordPress is kind of notorious because if you have to use a WordPress, such as myself, I have to use a WordPress for my website at work, and you want to do something custom with it. Well, there's these little thing called, what are they called? They're like widgets almost, and they're predefined by whatever theme you're using. So if your theme says, we're gonna have a block of text right here, and it's gonna be the shape of a circle, then no matter what you do, it's going to be the shape of a circle unless you want to dive deep into PHP. So if you don't know PHP, you can't really do much with it and, it and it sucks. So when people call themselves developers and all they do is make a WordPress where you just kind of drag and drop and click what you want, pick a theme, it's not really development and uh, that can get you a bad rap real quick and it doesn't really do anything to boost your resume. But WordPress does have some good aspects to it. If you're trying to hustle, try and make that money, then WordPress is all right. You can sell WordPress to businesses and then you know you can charge them, charge them a little fee to set it up and then you install it and you say, hey, here are some great theme options I, I, I designed for you and then they pick one and then you just select it and then you give them the URL so that they go to the website and then they log in and you can just show them like, if you wanna change, the, change the text on this site, just go down to here and then click here and then you can, the people that don't know how to code, they're just like, wow, this is amazing. So it's a really good option if you're trying to freelance and it's, a, it's kind of an easy way to make money. It's really similar to Squarespace. Oh, by the way, this video is brought to you by, I'm sorry. <laughs> Squarespace is never gonna sponsor me now. When you're working in a WordPress, you're stuck inside the confines of a theme or the confines of a plugin. So if you have a plugin and then all of a sudden there's a bug with that plugin that just it breaks or you change something in the WordPress that's connected to that plugin and it breaks, you have no audit log, you have no console log to go in and you, have, you can't check what the bug is, you can't see what's wrong. And so you're just totally, you have to uninstall your plugin, lose all the data that you entered into it and then reinstall it or hopefully submit a bug fix on wherever the plugin, whoever made it, that they can tell you how to fix it. But you're so dependent on other people's third party integrations with WordPress that it's, if you need to do something custom, it's almost impossible unless you're a wizard PHP developer. Now you can do some basic stuff with PHP, but unless you're building a theme for WordPress, which I've seen a few developer jobs for those, or you're building plugins for WordPress, and I've seen a few developer jobs for those, you're not really 
developing when you're using WordPress. So I know I talked a lot of crap about it, but I'm gonna show you how to make one just in case you have no idea what WordPress is or you've heard of it or you've seen it on a job post. We're just gonna go ahead and make one. I'm gonna use this website called Pantheon.io. No, I'm not sponsored by them or anything. Um, it's just really easy to kind of walk you through step by step versus if we go to GoDaddy and you have to pay 60 bucks to host or however much that costs. We're gonna use Pantheon, so it gives you one of those kind of janky URLs like mytestsite.pantheon.com, whatever, right? So we're gonna use that. Let's jump on into the video. Let me show you how to do it. All right, so here we are. We're at Pantheon.io. This is just like a, a, a nice, easy, walks you through it hosting um, WordPress. So come up here, above me, up there. Click uh, get free account. Cool, connect with L Google. I'm gonna open up this thing. All right, you see my email. Completing login. Oh, all right. My last name, and then um, test. Am I am I an agency? No, I'm not an agency. Click continue. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm all right. We want to create a new site. So click that. It's gonna launch the website here. We want to name it YouTube. Is awesome. How's that not taken? Okay, it's not taken. So pick WordPress since that's what we're talking about. Click deploy. There's Drupal, that's similar CMS system. I don't know enough about it to make a video, but it's really similar to WordPress in terms of it's meant to do blogging and there's probably plugins for it. So anyways, this is going to take a second to deploy. Let's wait on that. I will cut back when this is done. So we're back. Visit your Pantheon site dashboard. Go ahead and click that button there. I will cut back again. Oh, wait, no, it's working. Okay, it's working. Here we go. I thought it was working. Okay, so we have three things here on Pantheon. We have a dev, we have a test, and we have a live. So dev is what you do all your work on, and then you move it to test, where you test it, like, you just test it, you know, click, click on stuff, make sure it's working, and then if everything is good in the test, you move it to live. So that way you don't break anything. So you can have broken stuff in dev, and you test it to make sure, you know, do, do the best job you can to make sure everything's good. Anyways, so click install WordPress. Pick your language. Site title. I don't know. YouTube is awesome. I guess you can, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to change that. Uh, maybe I'll just blur, the, I'll just blur the password. Okay. And then uh, Josh. Oh, yep. There's my email. All right. All right, so I finally figured it out here. Got that password ironed out. Newbie mistake, but we're all good. So, all right, I'm gonna log in. And then click log in. All right, so we can see this is that panel thing that I was talking about in the video. If you come over here to the left, you can see plugins. So we go to plugins. In, so you can do add new plugin up here, the top left for you, so it's top right for me. And then you can just search all kinds of stuff. So if you want like SEO, you can search for an SEO plugin. Look at that. And then, then you can download this. But for Pantheon IO, if you do do this, if you follow this tutorial, you, you want to come up here to the above me. And then you want PHP sessions, it's called. Ses sessions. Sessions. P yeah, native PHP sessions. And you have to install this. So you can see the little icon that matches the icon for Pantheon. You need this for in order to have add-ons work or plugins work on this site. So then you click activate. It's already activated. Okay, so this is what I mean. You come over here, you make a page, you can click add new. So, all right, well, enter, enter a title here. So test page and then uh, lorem. Oh, it doesn't work. Okay, then you click publish over here, uh, up there. Fantastic. Okay, so now if we come up here to the top, you can see YouTube is awesome. So it's just like an interface. There's no real code involved here. Like technically you can do HTML, I think. If you go to text, uh, yeah, you can do code. You can click the code button. Or you can you can type, this is where you type your HTML in here. But there's like, you have to do inline styling. It's not good. So anyways, we'll do test, update it. And then come up here to the top and then click visit site. Yep, yep. So we have all this stuff here. So it's meant for blogging. So this is the theme that we're on. This is the default theme. If you want to change your theme, there's a lot of cool themes. So again, the toolbar over there. 
and click themes and you can just pick one and there's a lot so you can add new themes so these are the ones that come installed with WordPress there's a lot of neat themes like I don't know that one looks pretty that one looks pretty dope let's download that one click install might take a minute oh it's very pink oh fits me fits my color all right activate it so now our new theme if we go back to our site visit site it didn't work. Oh, yeah, refresh. Okay, now we're here. So this is my new site, and there's my test page, that page I just made before up here in the toolbar. Click test page. Oh, test, right there. There's this customize button up here at the top. This is where you can just change, like, the header settings. So typically this is your header up here with your social. Now some themes come installed with certain, you know, see, like, I'm mousing over that and does a little flip. Like, I didn't code that. They just came with the theme. Um background image if you want. You just have to explore this. So if I wanted to change YouTube is awesome to be like pink, there's no like no real way to do it other than like additional CSS and then here and then I don't know what is it called? Uh, is there is there an ID for this? No ID. Uh, we can do this. We'll take this and we'll put it over here into you can't see that probably. Let me zoom in. Paste and then we do like, you have to do important since this is all set by the theme. So every single CSS change that you do, normally you have to override with important. And important is bad practice, so don't do that. All right, so what you have to do for WordPress because it's WordPress. Okay, so color red, important. Sweet, I look like a really competent web developer right now. All right, you know, I'm gonna change it to this one instead, since I know that is actual text. So just another WordPress site, and now it is red. And if I take off the important, I bet you it changes back. Yep, because it's being overridden by the stuff in the theme. And so it's just the stuff like this that can get really difficult to, to kind of, you gotta MacGyver your way around if you wanna do stuff that's custom or you wanna do something that's not in a theme. You can either learn PHP and build a theme or build a plugin, or you can do this stuff over there. And that's not fun either. So, but you can see how quick this was to set up. And now you can actually go to this site right here. If I open it up in like an incognito here, so it's a live site, right? And so if you pay money, then obviously you can get the actual full domain, be.com or whatever you want it to be. But anyways, that's how easy it is to set up a WordPress. And you can just make these and sell them and make these and sell them, make really cool ones. Just fiddle around with the settings, um, the ad page, the plugins, there's lots of stuff, but it's really quick and easy to set up. All right, I'm gonna jump back out. So hopefully this video has been helpful. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think of this video. We have a Discord where I was hanging out there. I got a good group of people always helping each other learn different programming skills. So if you wanna learn, you want a support group or just motivation about life in general, just join us in the Discord. We're always hanging out, trying to improve uh, the new art banner I have progress. Anyways, if you like this video, Hit that little subscribe button to see more videos like it, and I'll see you in the next one.